I felt I was at a stage in my career where I had a better story to tell. I was, you know, I am in my 20s scaling a company um, and, and we really are scaling and we really are growing and, and there's, there's problems, there's issues, there's great times, there's sad times and everything that comes in between that that I want to showcase and help people and, and even if it helps one person that's, that's amazing, that, that's exactly what you want. Hi and welcome to episode 49 of the Employee Content Marketing Pod and this is the first time I'm in a studio. Great place um, in Shoreditch and uh, there's a great setup here. So I'm delighted to have uh, uh, Connor Cotton with me today. Connor is MD of Not Going to Uni. So I'm chatting with him about his own vlog and how he's used that to raise his own profile but also the profile of, of the business, business that he's leading. So. Let's get on with the chat. Hi hey Connor, how are you doing? Yeah, really good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Thanks for joining. This is Pleasure. the first time we've got the podcast uh, yeah. in studio, yeah. um, trying out the video video podcast. And uh, yeah, what, what I wanted to do is, I mean, we've had you back on the on the podcast a good few months ago. Yeah. In fact, God, I can't remember even well over, it was. Well over a year or I, I think ago. I think we're in, the, we're in the teens in terms of episode numbers. Yes, I think it's like 11 days. or 12. Early days. We're now up to... 47, 48 yeah. episodes. So, um, but what I want to do is get you back on because since we last spoke, you've well, you can tell me a bit about about what you've been up to. But yeah. I would particularly want to talk about the um, the vlog that you've been doing. So, yeah. before we get on that, let's do a bit of an intro. Tell us a bit about about yourself. Yeah. So, um, hell of a lot changed since that last episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, I moved back across to not going to uni, which is actually where I started my career. Yeah. in the early career space. Um, initially as the commercial director back in January 2021, it would have been. Okay, yeah. Um, and then in September 2021, actually became the managing director of not going to uni because the previous managing director was starting to semi-retire um, and the business was at that stage for its next level of growth and, and, yeah. and next stage of its, its journey. Um, so took over the business then and it's uh, certainly been a big culture shock to say the least, but <laughs> it's, it's all good, it's all fun. And the good thing about not going to uni is that it kind of does what it says on the tin, yeah? Oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, it's, it's obviously a brand close to my heart. It was, yeah. my, you know, my first full-time job was at not going to uni and I didn't go to uni. So, mm. so I'm kind of walking proof of, of what not going to uni does as well, mm. which I think is really nice and authentic as well. It's, mm. it's not like there are a number of people that work in this industry who actually do have degrees and so on and so forth, whereas actually I am living walking proof of what we're trying to practice and preach to, yeah. to young people across the country. Nice. And there's like, what were you, um, in terms of what in Not Going to Uni has to offer, what's your kind of, what's your offering in the market? So originally we were just a jobs board, um, mm. the Not Going to Uni website that a lot of people know, which, which still exists and is still very much part of the business. But what we've transpired to be now is, is a bit more of a, well, a marketing agency really for, yeah, nice. for early careers employers looking to hire school and college leavers at 16 plus or 18 plus. Okay. We're not just a... Um, job board anymore. We now yeah. work across, you know, creative content. Some of which we worked on with you, absolutely, um, yeah. with the Royal Air Force. It, yeah. um, we, you know, have recruitment services for supporting clients with shortlisting and things like that. We have an in-house social agency, yeah, nice. Inspire, where we work with influencers and, and you name it. So we're trying to be really end-to-end -end for anyone who wants to hire apprentices and school leavers, not just being one part of that strategy, but actually the whole strategy, yeah, if, if that's cool. what you want. Well, it's been great seeing seeing how. How far? Not going to uni's come, but also what you've been doing over the last what year and a half, yeah. half there for sure. It's um, so in particular, what what I, what stood out for me is is what you've been doing online in terms of your kind of your own personal brand mm -hmm. and how that's connected with not going to uni brand. But a big part of it is being your your vlog. So yep. tell us a bit about your your vlog. Yeah, so <laughs> it was something I'd actually toyed with the idea of doing uh, a couple of years ago, actually, yeah. um, when I when I was at Springpod. Um, at the time, Steve Bartlett was doing one. He was in his second series when he was in New York, um, when Social Chain was scaling out there. Um, at the time, Casey Neistat was in and out of daily vlogging, big mm. idol of mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a number of other people were toying with it. The Daily Goat, which the Goat Agency did, was another big inspiration. So I toyed with mm. the idea at the time, but didn't feel I was at a stage in my career and, and in my journey where I could add enough value. I, I wanted to make sure what I put together was going to add value and, and have benefit. Mm. Um, when I transitioned to the managing director role and not going to uni, I thought, hold on, you know, why don't I be the person I was crying out for? When I, when, you know, when I was 
growing up and I had aspirations of running a business, there wasn't many people out there doing the content that I'm doing. You had mm. Steve Bartlett from sort of the 2018 mark or 2017 mark doing it. Um, obviously, Casey Neistat, there's an element of business to what Casey Neistat did mm. um, and definitely probably the goat of vlogging to say the least. Mm. Um, and then you had, you know, things like the Daily Goat and so on, but they were they were about the whole brand. There wasn't really anything about that one specific individual. With Gary V as well, Mr. V. Yeah, you know, Gary V yeah, has, has yeah. Daily V, which again, and, and Weekly V, and I know it's changed so many different <laughs> yeah, types yeah. Of, of, of content that he's put out. So there was a lot of inspirations, but there wasn't anything that I found completely relatable. Mm. So I thought, why don't I do something and be the person that I was looking out for yeah, when, nice. when I was younger? Um, and I felt I was at a stage in my career where I had a better story to tell. I was, you know, and I, I am in my 20s scaling a company yeah. um, and, and we really are scaling and we really are growing and, and there's, there's problems, there's issues, there's great times, there's sad times and everything that comes in between that that I want to showcase and help people. And, mm. and even if it helps one person, that's, that's amazing. That's, that's exactly what you want. I think it's particularly, for me, compelling is, is that, and you've touched on this already, is that, is that you, know, you didn't go to uni. Yeah. You know, you, you are kind of a, a story, one of the many stories of not mm. going to uni. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and I think, you know, being MD and seeing your progression and you learning things and implementing things you've already learned, yeah. that kind of thing, is I think really, really interesting. And like, why else the vlog? Kind of, what are the reasons did you did you create the vlog? So. I had a, when I left school, I had this whole like identity crisis where I spent two years trying to figure out who I was. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that was because of not actually knowing who my role models were exactly. I had certain people like Casey Neistat, yeah. Gary Vee, who I always followed. Um, and once I'd kind of got into my flow, that I was like, right, you know, I want to be my authentic self. I want to show my authentic self. I think there's a really, especially in business, we have this kind of hustle porn culture yeah, totally around yeah. business. Um, yeah. Powell, you know, you just watch The Apprentice, Powell walking suits, walking down uh, yeah. across Millennium, you know, across the Millennium Bridge and, and things yeah. like this. And you kind of sit there and you're like, eh, it's not really how it works. I mean, no. I mean, in trainers. The, in the 1980s. Yeah, maybe. I mean, trainers, <laughs> jeans and a hoodie, you know, and yeah. sometimes I'm working in like, my gym clothes, I've come back from the gym and, and I wanted to show that actually business is not done, you know, how people necessarily think it's, mm. I want to be authentic. I want that glass bo box box approach to being an MD, a CEO of a company. Mm. Ben Francis is doing it really well at Gymshark. You know, he's, he's sharing everything. Another yeah, really modern day entrepreneur, really modern day CEO who, who's broken down those barriers. So I kind of idolized what he was doing and I thought that that's, that's really cool. That idea of being your authentic self and showing what modern day business is actually like now. Mm. Um, whether that be the clothes you're wearing, whether that be, you know, the, the way you go about doing your day, the new systems that, that are introduced with things like Notion and things we, me and you have mm. been speaking about. I wanted to just show everything warts and all mm. um, because I, I really feel passionately about that glass box approach to thing because that also has benefit for our culture as a business internally yeah. because the staff watch the vlog yeah, and, true. and you yeah, know yeah. they have benefit from watching it and following what I'm doing because it's very hard for me to be in their pockets if you get what I mean in yeah. terms of you know they don't know everything I do but they get this this 20 30 minute vlog or 15 minute vlog where they can find out everything that's happened in the month that they have, may have missed mm. <laughs> which yeah. is really nice for our culture and and what we're doing so there's been so many different benefits but they're just some of the reasons that there's i could sit here all day and list why we did it well actually it's it's like that's a really good point you make about about your your team seeing mm. what you're up to because you know leaders of businesses can be seen as as being kind of well, they, you know the classic thing of open door policy mm -hmm. we're always here if you want to ask questions that i think there is an element of Kind of they're detached from the rest of the business and like maybe especially people starting out in their career thinking oh well they're really high up in the company you know do i should i really approach yeah. them and so i think it makes makes it a lot more personable and makes you a lot more approachable and 100 yeah. percent. i i tell everyone in, in one-to-ones and things my door's always open mm. um no one really ever takes that that advice, but that's the, that's human nature. Yeah, you know, you, you usually only find things out when there's an issue, mm. uh, and people only tell you when you've missed telling them things. Yeah, do you know what I mean? That's that's just human nature. That's what we're like as humans. So doing the vlog allows allows them to see the things that I might have missed because believe me, I, I forget to tell people things and and all that other stuff all the time. So mm. it's been really nice to actually say to people, 
you know, watch this. Mm. If you if you feel like you've missed anything or you're not in the loop of what's going on, this hopefully gives you a summary. Yeah. We are very good at sharing internally, weekly roundup, Slack, you know, all these things. But like you said, as a as a someone running the company, when you look at a lot of the the age old businesses out there, the MD sits on the top floor in a corner office with his door shut. Mm. Um, and and you know the the new exec doesn't ever see them, mm. but I didn't want that. I wanted everyone to have a piece of me and, and be able to uh, interact with me and be able to have engagement with me and be able to and and in turn see that in the vlog. I want people who watch the vlog to realise that I'm very hands on. I'm yeah, not yeah. just sat in an office, you know, doing my own thing. Actually, I am, you know, practice what I preach and yeah. I'm really very involved in the company. Oh, it's great to see and you're out. Your how many months you've done now? You did December. Yeah, so we're what, February, five, five months in? Five, yeah, six nice. months in. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's been, it, every vlog gets better um, because, you know, when I first did it, it was kind of figuring out how to record. I, I remember filming my first clip yeah. and I sat there afterwards and I was like, that was weird. You know, it was just <laughs> yeah. really, not inauthentic, cause it was very authentic, but it just felt weird because, you know, you'd just, I was sat in my home office filming myself, you mm. know, had a, I bought a ring light from Home Bargains. I nice. uh, put my phone on a ring light, <laughs> switched the ring light on and was like, right, let's talk to my camera for a bit. Yeah. Um, then it, it slowly got better and I'm getting in the habit of recording things and Tyler, who's the guy who edits the vlogs, always nags me on, you know, make sure you record that and yeah, I'll put, some, put something on my Instagram story, like where I am, and Tyler will just message me and be like, make sure you record. Yeah, good, um, good. But I'm getting better at doing that. So each vlog, and, and I think over the next year, you'll see a transition in how the vlog changes. There's, there's things Tyler and I want to do with the vlog, like try new things. Mm. Um, for example, there's going to be a day in, hopefully in May, where Tyler's literally going to follow me around for a day. Yeah, awesome. Um, with a camera. Um, when we go to Birmingham or Manchester, we're toying between the two, depending on how meetings line up, and Tyler's going to follow my day. Mm. And we're going to incorporate that and see how that does. And, yeah, nice. You know, try different things. Try like a, uh, almost like a and a part of the vlog and so on, because we just want to see, use this first year to trial and error, see what works, see what doesn't work, see what people like, mm. um, and, and see what people want to see more of, more importantly as well. I think actually uh, there's that thing about just starting, isn't there? Because you, yeah. someone could go, right, well, I want it to be someone following me around for the whole day. Yeah. And that's kind of, a, that could be a barrier to actually doing it. So the fact oh. you just got on and did it yeah. is like, is I think is really fantastic. And that for me is a big takeaway, which is just start somewhere, do it, get used to doing it yourself and know that it gets, you know, that it gets better. So yeah. how do you kind of, people listening, watching, they're thinking, well, you know, I have thought about doing something. Yeah, or yeah. This sounds like a good idea. You know, how do you how do you get started, and how, how do you how do you maintain it as well? What, what do yeah, you, do you to keep keep it going? Yeah, I mean, consistency is a really big part of doing it because mm. um, I've seen because because I'm a bit of a business nerd. You know, whenever there's a, a new business vlog, I'll always watch it, yeah. and I've seen so many do do two months and vanish. Mm. You know, so consistency is important, even if you only put out five minutes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, consistency is really important because otherwise you're never going to build on it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the moment you miss one month, you're going to miss the next month and then you get in that rigmarole of just stopping doing it. So consistency is really important. You can film on your phone. Yeah. Most smartphones are good enough, whether it's an iPhone, whether it's a Samsung, whether it's a Google Pixel, whatever phone you've got, even an iPad, mm. um, even a laptop with a webcam, like there are a bit, you have an ability to record. You don't, look, I really want one of those vlogging cameras, which I know you have, <laughs> yeah. with, with the yeah. flip out screen and, and they're amazing. And, and I will get to that stage when we invest a bit more money in the vlog, mm. because that is part of our next phase of growth. But you can start with your phone. Well, these are great, you know, the iPhone 13 Pro The Max cameras are as good as some SLRs fantastic. and, you know, yeah. you know, and it's, it's so easy because it's always on you. Yeah, We're exactly. in a day and age where your phone is never not on you yeah. unless you have a social media detox or, or whatever. Mm. But even then, you're probably going to have, have, or someone you're with is going to have, have a phone on you. And mm. if you've got a partner, a wife, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, you know, they can record you. You know, yeah. you, there's always, it's just about not making an excuse. It's just kind of doing it. Like I said, just, just film that first clip. And then maybe set your phone up and time lapse you. Mm. And then you just, you know, slowly you feel confident, slowly mm. you feel comfortable doing it. Um, the biggest uh, sort of stage, that's one thing, doing it just, you know, sat at home. But the next stage, then doing it in public. Yeah. You know, but again, it's about taking it each step, you know, each step at a time, not just running all the way and grabbing a tripod and going outside and running through the streets of London. Mm. 
but doing it a little bit by li- little bit, you know, getting yourself a bit more confident, and then eventually it, it will click in together. Hundred percent together. So what I did, what I did with the, with this podcast, was yeah. basically start somewhere, you know, up in up in one of the rooms at home, just yeah. with my phone out and just recording the intro. Of course, just, yeah, just yeah. starting somewhere. I think that's yeah. really. Now, how do you like? Um, do you allocate like a, a day a week, or how do you kind of? Fits it, fits it into your, your kind of daily and weekly schedule? Yeah, so obviously if I'm going somewhere, such as today, yeah. um, I'll always try and get like B-roll and things like that. And then, and then I'll always make sure, usually at the start or the end of the week, I summarise my week. Yeah, nice. so, so every week there will be a summary of either what's happening or what's happened. Yeah. And then there'll be B-roll. Um, yesterday, for example, I was working on some system implementation with Laura, our head of marketing. Um, with Asana and this app called Fellow and things like that. So I did a piece, because I sat there and I was like, actually, I'm going to do a piece about systems. Yeah, nice. And, and yeah, how incorporating systems in a business, um, because it's new to me. Mm. I'm learning as I do it, so I'm going to share that. I'm yeah, going to share. Yeah. So, so there are some things that are planned, you know, doing a summary of the week, filming B-roll when I'm out and about, things like that. And there's other things that are very spontaneous. Mm. I will randomly think of something. I think that's going to be really good. Let's okay. record that. Um, and then you've got things like, um, occasionally I'll get a question from someone on LinkedIn. They'll be like, hi, I love the vlog. Could you answer this? I'd yeah. love to know your thoughts on this. Um, so there was one in, I think, the second vlog um, where someone asked about what the next 12 to 24 months of not going to uni's growth was going to look like. So, so I answered yeah. that. I set some time to answer that and think about that a little bit further. So it's a mixture. It's really a mixture of planned and spontaneous, depending on how my week goes. Because the nature of, as you know, running your own business, the nature of running a company is you know what you've got planned and what happens can be two very different things yeah absolutely. you know because yeah. things will happen at random times mm. um there are some sensitive things i can't share that i'd love to share because you know whether it be a client project we can't share or whether it be like hr kind of thing but sometimes it, i i feel like i want to share it because there's learnings from it but i'm trying to get in the habit of sharing anything where i feel challenged mm. or i feel like actually someone else is going to have this issue or someone else is going to experience this. I want to try and share it. Yeah. So it's really authentic and it's, like we said, it's really glass box as well. That's an example of, obviously, that marketeers talk about a lot, that valuable content. You yeah. Know, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, this is not, this is not going to uni and this is what we have to offer. It's you know, stuff that's actually going to be a, a utility for people as yeah. opposed to an insight into what, and what you do in the business. That's really interesting, that bit of, um, this is not going to uni. What I didn't want it to be was, this is all the great stuff not going to uni can do every month. Because mm. that's not what it's, it's not a B2B tool necessarily. Mm. We will organically get people watch it and be like, oh, these guys are cool. Maybe I should work with them. Yeah. That, organically, that will happen. The Go Agency, that, that happened. You know, yeah, all, massive. All yeah, of these gotcha. companies have that. But it's, it's not about that. Mm. It, it's actually about my journey and hopefully helping entrepreneurs, you know, for people who want to run their own company, people that are running their own company, whatever that may be. Yeah. Uh, I didn't just want it to be a not going to uni hammering mm. <laughs> down the throats of the people. Um, I wanted it to be much more than that. I suppose there's only so much you can say for just, just talking about not going exactly. to uni. Exactly. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, you know, a, a year's worth of vlogs is just going to be like a long sales pitch. Yeah, which absolutely. Just, yeah. What's the point? <laughs> yeah. You know, it feels like a waste of time. Yeah, it's a waste nice. of my time, Tyler's time, everyone else's time. And so, look, when you've, you've got Tyler who's editing the, you know, yeah. the, the videos for you, He's giving you prompts and everything. Yeah. You know, what if someone's like, well, look, you know what? We've got a, someone who does um, video for us already, but they're too busy. Or do I have to get someone to, to, do, to be able to do this? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Where do you start if you haven't got a Tyler? Yeah, so obviously there are tools now, like things like Fiverr and so on, where yeah. you can get video. It says, I know some people who have not, like in the gaming sphere, who have launched like videos and they, they pay someone on Fiverr to do their edits. And yeah. it's, you know, it's quite cheap. You know, you're always going to have some costs with launching things, um, or learn yourself. Yeah. You know, I, I've 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 looked at brushing up my skills on certain editing things. The beauty of not going to uni is where we've got the in-house content um, production side of things. We've obviously got that in-house, so I haven't had to learn too much. Yeah. Okay. I've learned the basics because more out of interest than a necessity. Mm-hmm. Um, but once I learned the basics, I kind of sat back, and I don't want to say that it's easy because it's not easy because there's a lot to it but I could very basically put an edit together it yeah. would not look as good as what Tyler can do it would probably people would look at it and be like this crap mm. but in terms of putting something together and piecing it together it's too it's doable one thing I said to someone the other day who was asking about I was like why don't you just record 
a couple of like selfie like videos, mm -hmm. go on TikTok, edit it together. There you go. There's your first vlog. Absolutely, yeah. You know, it's yeah, so you 100%. know, anyone can use TikTok. Mm -hmm. You know, my eight, eight year old niece can use TikTok. Mm -hmm. She knows how to piece together a video. You know. It's not the same level of a vlog edit at all. But it's a know. studio in your pocket, isn't it? But it's, it's a studio yeah. in your pocket. It's a mini, you know, mm. 30 second, one minute vlog you can put together really easily. And it just gets you in that mindset of thinking creatively, thinking, you know, overlaying music over it, how yeah. to chop things up on a very basic level. Yeah. Then you might, you might, you know, you might do that. Then you might save a bit of money on the side and think, do you know what, I'm going to pay a fiver editor to edit stuff or mm. I'm going to find a freelancer in London who's going to do it for me or, you know, my mate's dad who is going to do it for me or however, mm. however mm. that transpires long term. Well, I do this, actually, I, I tend to edit myself at the moment, yeah. you know, where I will, a bit like you, I, I like to get my hands dirty with it just to kind of, I mean, I've been involved in video for, for like years, um, but I've always had someone else yeah, doing the to filming do and yeah, doing yeah, the editing. Yeah. So I think for me as a, as a learning the craft a bit more is really, really, you know, really useful. And I've learned a lot over the years, but doing it myself is really good. What I've done is like, think, well, I can't take the camera out. And I can't take the Canon out. So I will just get my phone out. And you know what? Yeah. I'll, on the train ride back, um, I'll just get Vix out a video yeah, editing yeah, yeah. app and just and do something it together, you know? yeah. and actually sometimes that content is even even better than the stuff when I yeah, sit down fun. in front of a, a desktop computer and, yeah. and, and edit it and it's it. fun you know it's, it's fun you know I enjoy recording the vlog it's fun it's, it's a bit like therapy talking to a camera in a totally, weird, really weird totally. way it's the, it's the best therapy I get so many people say like oh you should do yoga and things like this and I'm like do a vlog <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like therapy totally. um, it's not exactly the same um, but you know there's, there's an element of sometimes I speak about something and some of the clips don't make it to the vlog you know but sometimes I speak about something and at the end I'm like I've just solved my own problem yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. just, or I've just vented to my camera my mm. phone um, and now I feel better. Yeah, and, nice, and so yeah. there's also that element of therapy with it and things like the edits, people find really therapeutic sometimes. It's just mm. that nice feeling seeing something come together. Yeah, definitely. Whether someone else edits it or you edit it, but when you then see the finished product, there's that sort of pride element as well. Of, wow, this is, this is cool. I like this. Even yeah. if you say, you know, if you say so yourself. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> I think actually it's like, obviously, you know, in marketing, there's understandably and rightly so a lot of talk about the audience mm. you've got to do it for the audience but there is an element of just doing it for yourself as well i think you know, yeah you know. you've got to think about you know number one i wouldn't I wouldn't do the vlog if i didn't want to yeah exactly. you know d go figure if I, if I didn't want to do the vlog i wouldn't do the vlog yeah well, don't, but, yeah, yeah but i want to do the vlog because mm. you know like i said there's other elements it's like it's like therapy i enjoy doing it I, mm. you know when i see a finished product at the end i think oh this is cool i like this this is what i would have watched yeah, when nice. I was when yeah you know, when I was going through those initial stages of my career and and still watch yeah. I still watch Ben Francis videos Gary V's videos uh, Stephen Bartlett's videos and podcasts you know I still watch all of that because I'm still learning mm. so so it's about you know I, I think that's the key with content is like if you're if you're sat there and you're thinking I want to create something it's create something you would watch create something that you would engage with because mm. it will then be more authentic because. It, 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 it meets your passions, you yeah. know, it, it ties in with what you would engage with. So hopefully you're going to create something that's really good at the end of the day. 100%. It's like you've, and you've, um, you've been putting this out on, I've seen it on LinkedIn in yep. particular, you, but you've put out on Instagram as well. Yeah, TikTok, yeah, it's Twitter. Nice. So I, I put it across platforms. Um, sometimes send it directly to people, especially people that are uh, mentioned in it. Mm -hmm. And what I've also tried to do, is, as you'd have seen, and if anyone watches it, is also try to include outside of work. Mm. So, you know, my family watch it. Yeah, lovely. Imogen, my, my, my girlfriend watches it because I want, again, I want it to be authentic. I'm a managing director. By the way, I do have a life. This yes, whole hustle yeah, porn yeah, thing. Apps, yeah. You know, yeah, I work late sometimes right. and these things happen, but I do also have a life. I go away with Imogen, you know, we walk the dog, I go to the gym, you know, but also sometimes I don't do those things. So I mm. want it to be really mega authentic and so I've got another audience, which is actually my family, who are just nosy. You know, my nana will watch it and message me and be like, oh, I love your vlog. They, f they finally know what you do, like yeah, what yeah, you really yeah, yeah. do. Not that they, <laughs> yeah. can, they still can't explain it. You know, my dad, my dad is, the moment I post about the vlog on Twitter, he's a PE teacher, so he should be teaching. The moment I post it on Twitter, he's one of the first people to like it and watch it. Yeah. You know, and, and so, because I, I, I don't live with my dad or anything, so I guess for him, it's kind of a way of seeing what's going on in my yeah, life yeah. and what's going on in the world. Um, uh, in my world and, and they're not going to uni world so so I've also got that 
whatever happens, I've always got my family as an audience for it. <laughs> yeah, too right. And ha has it gone down, you know, in terms of like reach and engagement? Yeah, um, I haven't got the numbers off the top of my head, but in mm. terms of, the, I mean, the feedback's been phenomenal. Um, I mean, I've had so many people message me like, I re like really love this. Yeah. Because a lot of those people work in the early careers industry. And, and when, and this goes back to a point I made at the start, when you look at the early careers industry, and you look at a lot of the businesses that are similar-ish to not going to uni, they're run by older people yeah. <laughs> um, who all went to uni. <laughs> yeah. So what a lot of people have said to me is yeah, it's yeah. amazing because it's, it, you're literally being the brand in your vlog. You're being, you're being this young MD not going to uni, yeah. learning to run a, run a company. I'm doing an apprenticeship in business whilst running a company. You know, yeah. it's that... You know, that's the feedback I'm getting for everyone. Yeah. Um, on, on, on LinkedIn, it's been amazing. A lot of the posts where I share the vlog have received two, three, four, five, six, seven thousand views. Yeah, lovely. Um, which has been amazing. LinkedIn's probably the best performing, but that's to be expected because it's a business platform. Yeah. Um, but like I said at the start, it's not necessarily about views for me. If one young MD or young wannabe business person watches it and gets some value from it, I'm more than happy. You know, yeah, more true. than happy. Um, we received a message, funny enough, on, on Instagram a few weeks ago from, I put it on my Instagram from um, someone saying that not going to uni changed their life. If someone says that watching a vlog, I saw that, yeah, yeah, awesome. so, yeah someone brilliant. said watching a vlog, you know, really helped me, you know, get my life on the straight, you know, I'd be like, that vlog, the vlog is worth it. Mm. The vlog is worth it just for that one message. Mm. Um, because I think sometimes we put too much focus on, on those numbers and it then means we try and create clickbait kind of content and you well know, there is that chasing there is a there's a thing about and i think this stops people from doing it or or continuing it more importantly is yeah chasing numbers if, if they're not like if they're not getting like what others people have been doing for years yeah hundreds or thousands of 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 people responding then they think it's not worth it and it is it is um it's tough you know you put stuff out there you naturally and this is typical of lots of creative people you, you know you invest time in it and you put it out there and what, you only get, you know, you don't get loads of people watching it? Well, yeah, they're yeah, busy yeah. doing stuff and it takes time for them to kind of consistency. build that up. Consistency. Mm. I, I, funny enough, the other day I went back and watched a couple of episodes of Everyday Steve. So Steve Bartlett's first ever vlog he did. Yeah, okay, yeah. And it's quite interesting actually watching Dragon's Den and then watching that because two very different Steves, obviously, because they're early stage of business. But those mm. first few vlogs don't have lots of numbers. No, no. Don't no. have lots of comments. They have comments because at that time, Social Chain was starting to get the PR coverage, hence he launched the block. Yeah. But, you know, there weren't big numbers. Mm. You know, so you've got to remember that. Gar you know, Gary V, Casey Neistat, at one point were nobodies yeah. who, who no one knew. You know, obviously, Casey Neistat, you know, like I said, the goat of vlogging. Like, he mm. is the goat of vlogging, you know. Mm. When you go all the way back to his HBO series with his brother yes, and, and yeah, those yeah, days, yeah. well, you know. He, he really was the goat of doing it. But again, would have, you know, he started at a point with, with nothing. I mean, if you listen to his story, he literally started with nothing, mm. you know, but the clothes on his back. So it's not a case of going, well, I haven't got a million views, I'm just going to stop, because that takes time, consistency. Mm. Casey Neistat's a prime example. It was, God, what, 20 years of him video making plus? Mm. Uh, and, and then he got, you know, got to the, the end, you know, his end goal. Hence, mm. he stopped vlogging because he was like, now I'm going to pursue my next thing. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it, it, don't focus on the numbers. Focus on the quality of content. And, and those things will come naturally off the back of it. Well, actually, then we can wrap up, actually, because I think we, we've, we've, you've got a tip there. You know, is a don't chase the numbers yeah. and don't let small numbers put you off. Yeah. You know, there's also the other thing about starting somewhere yeah, just well. start <laughs> just get going get the phone just out just film something yeah. you don't have to be you know in an awesome awesome studio to yeah. be able to do something like this yeah, yeah, and you yeah. can get to that point which is what i'm doing with the podcast yeah. i started with my phone you know in my my home office just recording something and then i'm progressing to yeah. this what other what other kind of tip or tips should should we leave Absor with listeners yeah absorb as much content as possible if you think about doing it go and absorb all the content that's out there yeah. um, i think that's really important because you know i i've spoken about loads of different people's content i absorb so that helped me because it helped me in terms of like styles of doing things mm. you know casey neistat's style is very unique yeah. Um, the way Stephen did things was very unique and does things very unique. The way Gary Vee does things very unique. His is different because he has someone following him. Yeah. Um, so go out there and actually absorb the content. 
um, before you do it and whilst you're doing it, because then you'll get the tips and tricks of the trade. Yeah, good shot. Um, and like I said, learn a bit more about the craft. Like actually learn, take an interest in videography. Take an interest in editing because you'll then learn tips and tricks for then creating the content. Yeah, so absolutely. there's certain things I know from listening to Tyler and listening to things about video, video editing and stuff that I now know to do because they help the editor or they help with the final product. So mm. it, it's about not becoming a master because it takes a long time to become a master and you, you will become a master, but actually being a bit of a student. Yeah, true. Being a yeah, student of your vlog, actually. Mm. And you can potentially, if you're doing that kind of vlog, you can showcase that that journey yeah in, in in your content that could be part of what you're doing i think i'll add to that as well in in terms of not seeing every single thing in life and in, in your day as an opportunity to shoot something but oh yeah thinking about <laughs> okay what am i doing today is there something i could capture there you yeah know? um and then just slot that slots into your day to day, which means it's easier to do. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you've got a, a vlog that's um, exactly. hit five months now. And yeah. Long may it continue. Long may it sure. continue. Yeah. Okay, mate. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Thanks for me so, join us in the studio. It's yes. fantastic to be able to say that. But yeah, good man. Thank, Thank you, mate. Good stuff.